Welcome again, International Standard Sunday School students. I am your dearest, dearest servant and host, Brother Pastor Brian Dale, from right here at the St. Mark Baptist Church, located in Waterloo, Iowa. Today is March 26th, lesson four, uh, Jesus Overpowers Legion. And the devotional reading is 2 Corinthians 10, 1 through 6, and the background scripture is Mark 5, 1 through 20. In Luke 8, 26 through 39, today's scripture is Mark 5, 1 through 13 and 18 through 20. And what we, just a, a, just a couple minute brief here, what we are dealing with here today, uh, saints is Jesus's empower, uh, Jesus's encounter, obviously with some unclean spirits and the, just the power that Jesus uh, Christ being Mashiach, being God, had over these spirits. And uh, if we remember, the Bible says, uh, John chapter one, y'all know some of my life verses, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. The same as the beginning with God. And we know that means uh, gen, uh, certainly in Genesis. So, and when we look, uh, when we lean into that a little bit further, uh, God said, I am God and God alone. Besides me, there is no other. So the claim for Jesus uh, that that Jesus is God come in the flesh. The Bible says, "And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us." Is a pretty out, uh, is, is is a pretty stunning claim um, that would not have been taken lightly uh, by the Jewish hearers. And I say that because we have to remember it is the same God who judged Lucifer in Isaiah chapter fourteen. And when that judgment came, he judged Lucifer because Lucifer's crime. And I know you've been told, oh, Luke, what was Lucifer's crime? Pride. Nah, it was so much worse than that. It was so much worse than that. Lucifer's crime was blasphemy. And blasphemy is calling good evil and evil good. If any of you wonder why Lucifer will never, or, or any of those angels that went along with this will never be forgiven, because Jesus told us the reason. Jesus said, you, uh, Jesus said of all blasphemies, that men blaspheme, they will be forgiven. But of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, they will not be forgiven. So what is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, Brother Dale? Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the Bible gives a definition of that as well, calling good evil and evil good. And we know that because the people Jesus that Jesus said that to, it was a direct teaching in response to them saying he had done a good thing through evil means, right? So I said all of that to point that out, saints, any of any any by and it's this simple any jesus any sin that people commit murder theft lying whatever that sin is murder genocide all of these things rape malice, all of these things that people do those sins were nailed to the cross with jesus so this is not a question of people going to hell because they killed somebody or they robbed somebody etc etc everybody in that that's going to be in hell and, and then the lake of fire did the same thing that Lucifer did and those angels with them, which blasphemed the Holy Spirit, which is calling good evil and evil good. And they do that by not accepting Jesus as Savior. They say, no, I'm good. I'm good. I, I don't believe that, which means I don't believe that lie is what they're saying. By saying I don't believe that, you, they are calling Jesus a lie, thereby calling good evil and evil good. That's why people in hell, I said that because... Saints, we have to realize that Jesus has the Jesus is the righteous judge that's going to judge all things, whether in heaven and, and when he was on earth, Jesus judged this stuff. So him having power over those unclean spirits comes about because he is God, holy, righteous, the creator of all things, eternal, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm going to read these scriptures arrival, Mark 5, 1 through 5. They went across the lake. In the regions of Gerasenes, when Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tomb to meet him. The man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with the chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him night and day among the tombs and in the hills. He would cry out and cut himself with stones. And we've all seen, you know, these, these demonic things. Uh, portrayed on Hollywood movies about scenes just like this. I think one of the most famous uh, for for my generation uh, anyway would probably have been Poltergeist. 
But this stuff is real. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, right? But against principalities, against dominions, against rules of darkness, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. These demons that were in that were enveloping this man, that were indwelling this man, had supernatural strength, which means they made him supernaturally strong as well. And we know that because if we go to the book of uh, Daniel and if we go to First Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, uh, Second Timothy, Revelation, if we go to those books, we hear about someone called the son of perdition, which and the, the book of Revelation refers to him as the beast. And that beast is the Antichrist that is actually indwelled by the dragon, which is Satan, that old serpent, the dragon, Satan. Right. And that person is going to be able to do some things. And along with the false prophet, they're, they're going to call down these false lion, uh, signs and lying wonders. They're going to be able to do some things uh, that are super that are actually supernatural but they're not from the spirit of God. So I said that to point this out, saints of God, when we talk about dealing with these spirits, when we talk about this stuff, the supernatural strength that demons give people, the supernatural, supernatural abilities, this didn't, know, this didn't only happen here in, in Genesis with this man that came out the caves yelling and, and being demon possessed. We know that demons do actually give people these supernatural abilities and this is what this is what you all also, especially in the church today, have to realize before I move on and read a few verses here is every everything that every every move, every supposed move of God is not of God. Right. So I, I'm saying that because Satan can also create lying signs and wonders that actually look like it could be from the throne of God. Satan can also give you things that you think are blessings, but they're not blessings because blessings, blessings produce a spirit, a spirit of assurance and comfort. And that we know that that assurance and comfort comes from God, right? So Satan can't give you a, anything that's going to comfort you. He can't give you anything that's going to assure you. All he can do is give you something that's going to deceive you. So saints, even in the house of God, we have to be aware that demon possessed people can actually look like they are healing and certainly they could, maybe. But what I'm saying to you is everything, as they said, that's glitter, that glitters may not be gold. And further than that, the Bible also tells us to try those spirits, whether they be of God or not, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And, and I'm reading this description and we'll move on. They refer to Jesus and his disciples across the lake as the east side of the Sea of Galilee, the region broadly called Decapolis, meaning 10 cities. Pinpointing exactly where in the region uh, Gerasenes is, Jesus and the disciples landed. Landing was difficult. The region is associated with the cities of Gadara and Gerasa, potentially confusing the matter. Geras Garasa can be ruled out because of its 40 mile distance from the sea. This distance would prohibit the incident from playing out as recorded. And then we move on. It says, Jesus is not named in the original Greek, but context makes clear that he's uh, the one who got out of the boat. And, and again, we know uh, they, we know that oftentimes inference uh, can actually um, advance the cause of the gospel. Not, not inference, fern, uh, infern doctrine, but there are things that we can infer uh, by how things are written. For instance, uh, the gospel of John. John never names himself by name in the Gospel of John, but he referred to himself as a disciple who Jesus loved. Right. So what we are, uh, we can infer that John obviously is the disciple Jesus loved. So y'all know I said that seeing things into uh, scripture is dangerous oftentimes and it is. But there are a few times where certainly it is appropriate to draw teachable and applicable uh, conclusions. Just follow the spirit of God on that. The man's coming from the tomb, living in the tombs, were cause for instant concern. Uh, these tombs would be caves that are carved into the rock, forming an acropolis, a city dead. To have an impure spirit indicates supernatural possession. And I'm going to stop there. Uh, well, once the possessed man lost control of himself, his community tried to step in. So today, saints, these same things happen. Remember, Satan ain't changed. Ain't, and my mom used to say, boy, ain't nothing changed but the year. And I'm pointing that out today because when we talk about people that are demon possessed like this, 
they lose the ability of reason and self-control. That's what demon possessed people. That's how you know somebody is what we would call mentally ill, right? Because you know, I've called it chin up sickness and then neck down sickness, neck down sickness being physical ailments, chin up sickness being sickness of the mind. The difference being an example is Miriam, you know, Miriam stepped out of line uh, with God and he put some leprosy, you know, put some leprosy on her in the time of Moses. So that was that would be considered a, a, a neck down sickness. Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter four stepped out of line with God and God by, uh, by Nebuchadnezzar's own testimony removed. Uh, God removed Nebuchadnezzar's reasoning from him or his ability at self-control and reasoning. And that's why he was out there like a wild man. Uh, his, his fingernails looked like claws. He was eating grass and on the field doing all this crazy stuff because it was a disease of reasoning. So I'm saying today, along with the supernatural strength that demons, because people that are demon possessed don't all the, all the time have this supernatural strength, but they can, but they absolutely have uh, the disease of reasoning uh, it, uh, with the mind. So I want to be uh, clear about that. This is not necessarily a new thing. And the people try to chain him down. It tells us here. And today we could view this sort of thing as somebody being medicated, if you will. We use medication to control people like this who have lost the ability to reason. We give them Depro Rivera shots. Uh, we give them... Uh, Seroquel, we give them all of these things to control their ability uh, or to at least tone down uh, their irrational behavior because that is ultimately what we're talking about. But I wanted to go into this before we get into the confrontation piece is that yes, Jesus was facing uh, this demon, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you have to remember that people that are demon possessed are deceived. People that are demon possessed are outside of the ark of safety because there, there are there is no one on the planet who just has no spirit in them. They're they're either saved or they're not saved. There's only two type of people on this planet, and it's people that are saved by the blood of Jesus, and then there's everyone else. It is that simple, saints. So when I talk about that, I'm saying that because the people that are saved, they have they are indwelled by the Holy Spirit. Right. Anybody that has not received salvation is not indwelt by the Holy Spirit, which means they must be of the wicked one, because even Jesus said, he who is not with me is against me. And if you aren't gathering with me, you're scattering abroad. Jesus didn't say you have to be acting a fool and, and be schizophrenic or anything like that to be scattering abroad. He simply said, if you're not with him and that's saved, that's saved. That's blood covered or covered in Jesus' sinless life and dwell with the Holy Spirit. Then you are against him, which means you are of the evil one. It's that simple, saints. I know we want to say that there are people sitting on the fence because of that scripture about cold or hot, the lukewarm in the book of Revelation. But people are in one of two camps. It is that it is no more difficult than that confrontation. And we're all, yeah, we're almost done here. Uh, when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus said to him, come out this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? He said, my name is Legions, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again not to send them out of the area. Here, this spirit would have recognized Jesus because these same spirits, right, were expelled from heaven by God. Right. So they would have recognized Jesus. And we know that spirits can even recognize who you are, because remember, there was another scripture that uh, the, the, these demons uh, asked this man. I believe it's in the book of Acts. They said, Peter, we uh, Paul, we know Jesus. We know who are you, <laughs> which means Paul and Jesus, they recognized the authority that they had over him. But. When they saw these, this, this person, they said, who are you? Basically, who are you to tell us anything, right? Because the reason is, is because either you're saved, Paul, you're saved by Jesus, like Paul was in, in, in the rest of us, 
or you're not saved, saints. And those demons don't recognize your authority because you are, you're actually one of them, whether you're violent and crazy or not. So when we talk about that, these spirits recognize Jesus, but they don't only recognize Jesus, they recognize those of us who follow him. Because the spirit, that light is on us, saints, that light is all over us and they are going to recognize that spirit because you have to remember that even angels were created. Angels were created. We were created. Angels were created. Who created them? God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, which means Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Christ is God. He created them. Now, he didn't create them to do what they did, but he created them. They made a choice. They were expelled from heaven. And that's what we have to remember. <laughs> and they go recognize him and they recognize his followers. Why do you think that serpent in the garden attacked Adam and Eve? Because they were made. Adam was made in the likeness and image of God. Ooh, they recognize God and they recognize those who follow him. And y'all who playing around with them, keep playing. <laughs> you keep playing. Departures. Mark 5, uh, uh, 5, 18 through 20, and then we'll be done here. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you. Now, I'm, I'm going to go back to here. And when he said, my name is legions, we, I want us to see the release moment here as well. Verse 11, Mark 5, 11, a large herd of pigs was feeding on nearby hill. The, ge the demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out of and went to the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. But this, saints, this does not mean those spirits were drowned. It just means that those swine that the demons possessed were drowned, right? I want to point that, I want to point, point that out because the things of, the thing about demons is they are going to lead you to destruction and they are going to go on and do that to somebody else. That's what you have to recognize. As Jesus said, and, and again, Mark 5, 8 through, 18 through 20, and then we're done. Go home, tell your people how much the Lord has done for you and show uh, how he has had mercy. So the man went away and began to tell Necropolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. Saints, you don't have to necessarily, you could be a saint of God who's been struggling with sickness. But I would employ you to, like this man went and told those people, what Jesus did, just like John chapter four, the woman at the well went to the town and said, come and see a man who told me everything that I've ever done. Somebody needs to hear what God has done for you. Somebody needs to hear your testimony. Somebody needs to hear specifically from you. Y'all so busy trying to bring people to church. You need to come hear my preacher. You need to hear my pistol. No, they need a word from the Lord. And that word from the Lord could come uh, from you right where you are with them at work in a restaurant in your home in your neighborhood mowing your grass across the way, whatever in in in, in uh, back to back traffic <laughs> and if you don't ever think traffic can be that slow where people can roll down the windows and even maybe can get out and talk to each other <laughs> you've never been on the one ten or five or I five in Los Angeles California you just never been there I have so wherever you are God has somebody that needs to hear from you about all the things he's done. And those people that aren't with the Lord, they got cold-blooded spirits on them. You have to realize that in the name of Jesus Christ, you can pray for those people and the Lord can intervene with them. Because if you are, as I said, of the light, those demons are going to recognize you. They know Peter, obviously they knew Jesus, or they knew Paul, they knew Jesus, obviously. And they're going to know you as well. So you have the authority, obviously, to pray and, and call out on the name of God for him to deal with that. But don't forget, once he does, go and tell somebody about what the Lord has done for you and what you saw him do for somebody else. Because somebody needs to hear from me. So be it.